everybody. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk some more about aspect patterns. Um, today we're gonna talk about the Grand Cross. So, what exactly is that? I know in the previous video I talked about um, a T square, and a T square is three fourths essentially of a Grand Cross. <laughs> Um, a grand cross, whereas the T square is two planets in opposition and both of those planets in opposition square an apex planet. The grand cross will have a planet opposing that apex planet. So you'll have four, at least four planets. You might have other planets conjunct some of these planets, but you'll have at least four planets, um, forming a giant square <laughs> essentially by square aspects. So you have like 190 degree aspect another 90 degree aspect, another 90 degree aspect, and another 90 degree aspect. Um, that is a green cross. It is more stable than, um, than a, than a T-square is. Now, <clears throat> these, the, tr the traditional way that they are read is they'll either be cardinal grand crosses and the cardinal signs will all be in the cardinal signs they'll all be in the fixed signs or they'll all be in the mutable signs meaning you'll have a cardinal grand cross a fixed grand cross or a mutable grand cross so that means like you'd have four planets the four planets i'm talking about they'll be in like a mutable grand cross would have them in um sagittarius pisces gemini and virgo um now, that is the traditional or classical way to read them. I generally do stick to that. Sometimes I will deviate if I feel like I should. That really is on a case-by-case -case basis about the whole chart. There might be reasons why, um, why I might be called to, to deviate from using that classical or tradi traditional definition. But that is that is essentially what it is. Um, I might ask myself, you know, if you've got something that's like a grand cross and it's very tight, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say you have, uh, let's say you've got the moon at zero degrees Libra, you have the sun at 29 Sagittarius, you have Mars at zero degrees Aries and you have um, Venus at 29 degrees Gemini. They're not all immutable signs. However, I might sit and ask myself, why would this person have wanted to have incarnated into this lifetime with it like that? That would be a question I would ask reading. Like, why would, why would this be the way that it is? Because I do... I personally do, I do, this is my belief, I do feel like, you don't have to agree with me, but I do feel like when we, when we are born into this lifetime, we do choose things that we want to deal with and go through in our lives, and that might be reflected in our chart. So in a way, we might kind of get to decide how we want our charts to look maybe not exactly but i think we do have a hand in it based on what we want to um accomplish so i might ask myself why the person wanted it this way um i will say though when you see a grand cross and they're not all in the same what looks like a grand cross and they're not all in the same they're not all fixed they're not all cardinal they're not all mutable it might not be as forceful as if they were um, still important, but it might not pack the same punch that it would if, say that, that moon in Libra, and I can't even remember what I said now, I think Mars and Aries, at zero, both at zero degrees, uh, if they were at 29 Pisces and 29 Virgo. So I would take that, but anyway, that's getting off kind of onto a whole other fucking tangent. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that's the classical definition of it. Um, but I will sometimes count them, um, even if they're not all in the same, if they're not all cardinal fixed or mutable. Um, in the star cards, we do go over in the book, we do go over a little bit about what a grand cross is. So 
a grand cross, you have these four planets, at least four planets, and they are all kind of, um, they're at odds with each other. There's tension with them. Um, they're all square one another or opposing one another. You know, there are two oppositions. And then the square, the planets are, you know, squaring one another. Um, for the Grand Cross, I would certainly look at the midpoints between each of the square aspects. Like, um, I know I said Venus here. I don't have the Venus card out. But, like, for, um, let's say you had the Sun, the Moon, Mars, and Pluto all in a Grand Cross aspect pattern. They're all square one another. Um, I would certainly look at like the midpoint between the sun and the moon, the midpoint between the sun and Mars. Um, and same thing, let's say you had Pluto opposite the sun. So I would definitely look at the midpoint between Pluto and the moon and Pluto and Mars. I would certainly look at the midpoints here with the square aspects to see kind of by sign and house, wherever those midpoints are can give you an idea of where to release the tension between each of the individual squares, which that's never a bad thing to look at. You can look at that even in just charts where you just have a square aspect. There's not a grand cross or a T-square. You're just wanting to, you know, look and see uh, <laughs> how to balance or how to, how to release the tension between the square aspect. Like let's say you've got the sun and the moon square. You can, well, that's some midpoint, so that's not a good example because you need to do that anyway. You need to look at that regardless. But um, let's say you've got the Sun and Pluto squaring one another. Um, definitely look to see where that midpoint is in your chart by sign and house. Um, to give you an idea as to how to release some of that tension. Um, so definitely do that. But with the Grand Cross, the most imp the important thing with it also is to balance the oppositions. So depending on what you've got going on, um, like let's say you've got the sun, moon, Mars, and Pluto in a green cross. Um, let's say you've got Pluto, Pluto and the sun opposing one another in this configuration, and you have the moon and Mars opposing one another. Focus on those oppositions, the balance, balancing those oppositions will help to um, make the whole aspect pattern easier to deal with. Um, this is where, this is, this is another, that I would become very familiar with how those oppositions play out in your life um, and how to balance them. I would, I would really pay attention to, to that. Definitely pay attention to that. Um, because while the Grand Cross is, is more stable, is a more stable aspect pattern, for sure than like the T-square. You do have two oppositions with the Grand Cross versus with the T-square, you only have one. So balancing those oppositions is very, very, very important. Very, very, very important. Um, I would say that along with the midpoints. You can attack them from, from different ends. Um, but yeah, de definitely do that. Um, transits uh to the to the grand cross to a grand cross in your chart regardless of what it looks like um they're gonna light like let's say you have what i was talking about and you happen to have like saturn transit saturn conjunct the moon that's gonna light up that's gonna light up the grand cross specifically though i would pay attention to the opposition i would pay pay attention to the opposition between um the moon and whatever planet for sure um for sure for sure i mean it's still it's going to square other planets too but I would, I would the the opposition planet the transiting planet conjuncting one planet and then opposing another planet i would pay careful attention to how that will manifest um and i would say the same thing with synastry same thing in synastry you can have a you can have a green cross in your chart and somebody uh somebody's something or another <laughs> uh, happens to conjunct one of those planets, it's going to light up that that green cross in a, in a different way. It may or may not make it easy. <laughs> Doesn't always. Depends on what's going on in the whole thing. 
but um, that's definitely something that would need to be taken into account as well. Um, I would definitely keep the orbs tighter here. Um, like for instance, um, if you had a, you know, if you had like all of these planets were all at, I don't know, 60 degrees something, all squaring one another, that would be pretty tight. So I would definitely count that. But if you had like, I don't know, let's say the moon at, I don't know, let's say the moon at 16 degrees Aquarius, you have Pluto at 18 degrees Scorpio, you had the sun at 16, oh, I'm going to get confused. You want to make sure to keep the orbs tight. I'm going to get confused as there's too many numbers and cards and shit. <laughs> keep the orbs tight. Meaning I wouldn't, if you have like, let me try again. If you have like the moon at 16 something, you have Pluto at 16 something, you have the sun at 16 something, and then you have the Mar and you have Mars and it's like at, uh, I don't know, nine, nine something. I don't know that I would necessarily count that as a grand cross. Maybe it would really depend on the whole chart, but I might not. Um, the tighter the orb between the planets involved in a grand cross, the more um, powerful it's going to be in your life. Um, so definitely take that into consideration too when you read. I would. Um, anyway, I'm going to get going. <laughs> So, um, if you want to, uh, follow us on Instagram, you can find us at let's fuck with astrology. Um, I'm at Saturn season astrology on Instagram. Natalie is at Abiturnal astrology on Instagram. If you want to like or subscribe or whatever the fuck people do with videos on YouTube, you can find us by searching for let's fuck with astrology in the YouTube search bar. If you do the Reddit thing, come join us on the subreddit. Let's fuck with astrology. And if you're interested in the star cards, go to let's fuck with astrology.com slash star dash cards. One more thing before I stop. Um, people get very hung up on aspect patterns and they're, and they're cool. Like, don't get me, like they're cool to look at. Um, they definitely catch your attention. Okay. Definitely catch your attention. In some charts, they are going to be, this is me personally, how I read them. They will catch my attention more than others. Um, some charts, the aspect pattern might be a piece of a, something that feels more important to me. Doesn't mean I won't mention them. I just, I guess my point is, I don't think they're the end all be all. So do pay attention to them, but don't solely focus on them. And I think they're destined to be, a, uh, that does tend to happen where people just focus on um, the aspect patterns, but don't focus on the rest of what's going on. Certainly take note of them, certainly pay attention to them, but I, they're not the end all be all. Let me put it like that. They're important, but they're not the end all be all. That's what I'll say about that. Anyway. I will, uh, I will see y'all later.